the antiquing stage. Now, if you listened to the last section, what we did was we took our primered piece of molding. We applied our first coat of cocoa berry stain. We wiped it off. Now, if you notice that this piece has a shine to it because we've used a high gloss lacquer sealer on this particular step because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be taking our antiquing glaze with a paint brush and what I'm gonna be doing is applying the antiquing glaze to all the cracks and the crevices. Now, all of Pearlworks parts, one of the things that we emphasize is that I design all of my pieces to be stained. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. If you look at the detail of the Pearlworks parts, we have a lot of sharp edges and we had a lot of deep crevices. In those deep crevices, what I'm going to be doing now is applying the black antiquing glaze. Now, Sergio, go ahead and show that technique for us. Now, what we're doing here is we're highlighting the black in all of the linear lines of the molding. And what I kind of relate this to, it's almost like eyeliner that a woman will use on her eyes. And what this does, it brings contrast to your piece of finished material. Now we're also going to take the black and we're going to put it in all the different cracks with this little tiny brush. And these are the recesses that when I carve and I make my pieces, I do this on purpose because I know in order for me to get a very realistic look of my material, I need to have a place for the glazes to go. Some of the problems that you'll have with some of my competitors' products is that they're very smooth and there's no cracks and crevices. They have very open areas and it's very difficult to finish those pieces. Now, if you notice now, you start to see the piece start to pop. It doesn't just look like a flat cocoa berry color. It, it has some contrast now. And if you'll notice in the shell, that yellow honey color that's coming through, what that is is the primer, that pale yellow primer that we used. And you've got three different colors now emerging. And it's starting to give the piece a really warm and nice look. Now, this particular technique, you're going to be doing this to the entire piece of molding that you're going to be finishing. And really, it goes pretty quick. And this particular step is probably one of the most important to bring out the detail. Now, this is called antiquing. The next step that we're going to be doing is called dry brushing. And instead of going into the cracks and crevices, we're going to be going to the edges on the next technique. And we're going to be bringing out those details. Now, if there's a little bit of excess and there's a drip, you can go ahead and wipe it. And that's the reason, again, why we seal that step. For example, let's just say you didn't like this and you wanted to start over. Because you've sealed it with high gloss lacquer, you can actually take this all the black and strip it and wipe it out with the rag if you want to and completely start over. Now, if you want to take that off, what you need to do is you don't want to use acetone because that'll strip the uh, lacquer off. What you want to use is the glazing compound that the stains are made from, and that is the base. This glazing compound is used as a stripper and a cleaner also because it's the base material for all of our stains and glazes, including the antiquing glazes. Now, Sergio's wiping the edges out because he's probably got a little bit of pieces here and there that went over the edges. Now, you don't have to do that. Again, this is kind of a personal taste. Now, once this step is finished and you're happy with the look, bring out the high gloss lacquer and we're going to seal this coat. Again, if we don't seal the coat and we make a mistake, we got to start over from scratch.